So it means that if the resources are not scarce, economists will not be economists. Listen to me carefully. It means that scarcity gave birth to what is called economics. Because the resources are scarce, that is why there is a need for us to study economics. Therefore, economics is the management of scarce resources. I hope it makes sense. Our wants are unlimited. Our, all, our wants, our needs are unlimited. And then our resources are limited. So it means that we study economics as a subject or as a discipline so that we could manage the scarce resources judiciously. I hope it makes sense. So that is my contribution to the definition of economics. You can also search on the definitions of um, the definitions that Adam Smith, Samuel Sen, and then Lionel Robbins, and then the rest gave, Alfred Marshall gave. How would it say? Now quickly, let us look at the branches of economics. We have one microeconomics. When you talk about microeconomics, you are talking about the study of how individual firms or consumers and suppliers make decisions and how they interact with one another in the market. So it means that microeconomics focuses on individual. The word is individual, individual, individual. How individual firms and or consumers and suppliers make decisions. I hope it makes sense. So microeconomics as a discipline or as a branch of economics focuses on the individual, individual consumers and then individual suppliers. I hope it makes sense. And how these individual suppliers and the individual consumers interact on the market. Now this interaction on the market is what is called the invisible hand of the market. The invisible hand of the market. If you talk about the invisible hand of the market, we are talking about the fact that we allow the demand, the demand and then, then the supply to create its own forces. So we are talking about the hand or the operations or the activities of demand and then the activities of supply, the two of them um, working together in order to bring equilibrium in the economy. So these are what is called the invisible hand of the market. We are talking about the forces of the demand and then the forces of what? The supply. They, these two working together in order to bring equilibrium in the economy. I hope it makes sense. So that is the microeconomics. But the macroeconomics, in contrast, look at the economy as a whole. It looks at the economics as a whole. So it means that if microeconomics, if microeconomics is looking at the trees in the forest, if it is looking at the trees in the forest, then macroeconomics, macroeconomics will be looking at the forest itself. The forest itself. The aggregate, the economy as a whole. The economy as a whole. And then we are saying that it studies the structure, performance, and the behavior of the economy as a whole. That is to say that it studies aggregate phenomena. It looks at like inflation, it looks like national determination, um, the national income, uh, it looks about, like it looks at um, um, business cycle, the exchange rate, international trade. These are the things that macroeconomics concerns itself about. So it looks at the, uh, the economy as a whole, the GDP, the NDP, and then the rest. That is what macroeconomics looks at. But the microeconomics looks at the individual, so demand and supply. So demand and supply, when it comes to macroeconomics, it becomes aggregate demand and then it becomes aggregate supply. But if it is under micro, it becomes demand and then it becomes supply. The consumers, the individual consumers, if they come to macroeconomics, they become household, household. And then the individual suppliers, when they come to the macroeconomics, they become firms or industries. I hope it makes sense. So that is the difference between the two. All right. Now quickly, let us look at what is called economic theory or theories. And then uh, economic model or models. If you look at economic theory or theories, we are saying that 
They are the statements that are used to explain and predict behavior in the real world. Now, in simply put, I can say that when you talk about economic theory, we are talking about the written aspect of economics. That's all. We are talking about the written aspects, the written expressions of the real world. So when you are reading demand and supply and say that what is the law of demand, you say that, oh, the law of demand says that the higher the price, the lower the quantity demand, that aspect is what is called economic theory. That aspect is what is called economic theory. It is the written aspect of the, of the economics. Of the FL of economics as a field. Sorry. So we are saying that there are statements that are used to explain and predict behavior in the real world. But when it comes to the economic model, he said that it is an abstract representation of the reality. Abstract representation. So in simple put, we are saying that um, the economic model is the diagrammatical, is the graphical, and then it is the mathematical representation of the economic theory. It's a diagrammatical, it is a graphical or functional or mathematical um, expression or representation of the economic theory. So using demand and supply for instance, we said that the law of demand with the theory aspects is the economic theory. But when it comes to the economic model, model, sorry, when it comes to the economic model, it is this place that we are going to look at the demand curve, the supply curve, the demand function, the demand table, the demand shadow. When we talk about shadow in economics, we mean table. I hope it makes sense. So the model looks at the table, it looks at the, the diagrammatic expression, the diagram, so the demand curve. Then it looks at the mathematical expression with the functions. So the diagram talks about curve, the shadow talks about tables, and then the mathematical aspect talks about the functions. So this is all that we can learn for now when we are looking at the microeconomics, the introductory aspect. So today we have looked at the introduction, contributors, in the, um, and then my conclusion or my contribution on the subject of economics, and then branches of economics, and then economic stories, and then economic models. In our next video, we are going to look at the positive statement versus normative statement. I hope it makes sense. Sometimes you are saying that, yes, indeed, you are saying that economic theories, they are statements that are used to explain and predict behavior in the real world. But this statement could be categorized into two. We can have positive statement and then we can also have normative statement. So in our next video, we are going to look at the positive statement and then the normative statement. Thank you for today. Once again, my name is possible. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button so that anytime we upload videos, you can have access to it. You can also send us your question in the comment section. You can also like it. I hope it makes sense. Bye-bye.